I was approached by the curator, Rachel Kent. Uh, she has been researching this exhibition, I think actually for years. She has a particular personal engagement with the idea of narrative form. And so she was interested in different ways that artists tell stories and in particular narratives or stories that are perhaps excluded from the public sphere. We began talking about artworks that I made when I first graduated from art school which uh, lay out particular narratives from the European canon, but which do that within the kind of methodology of experimental education, forms of learning that allow children to make a story using form before language. The kind of starting point for my presentation here is a work that I made in 2001 called It's Because I Talk Too Much That I Do Nothing. And that's a quote from Dostoevsky from his seminal existential novel, Crime and Punishment. Crime and Punishment tells the story of a protagonist, Raskolnikov, who conceives of a terrible crime to murder his landlady and a kind of unscrupulous pawnbroker. He conceives of the murder as a kind of artwork and he experiments with the idea that he has the right to, um, to kill this woman. He carries out the crime but then things fall apart for him and eventually he repents his sin and is incarcerated in Siberia. The moment that he repents the murder is uh, rendered as a, a kind of block text which reads, I murdered, and it's in front of a model of a Russian Orthodox church which was demolished uh, by the Soviets. And you can do these amazing Dostoevsky walking tours in St. Petersburg. And so when I was researching this work, I walked around with a kind of literary expert to all the different places that occur in the novel and we kind of mapped it out together as a kind of narrative structure in actual geographical space. And then I went back to my studio and made it as a kind of a model with the idea that it's a flexible, fluid model. So going back to that idea of alternative education um, and the idea of using blocks to map out ideas and change ideas as well. Every time I put it out, I think of a different way that I could look at the text. So I think as readers we can be active readers and we can also have a kind of parallax view of books. We can read them many times over our lives, make lots of different associations and form different connections. When Rachel Kent and I began speaking about how I would make a new work, I started thinking about how might a text be put in service of contemporary life. So as a starting point, I looked at the Gulag Archipelago by Alexander Solzhenitsyn as a kind of pairing with, with crime and punishment. And I thought again about ideas of literary motif as well and the idea of the Onion Dome, which is kind of central to this type of literature in a way, and the idea of near and far and distance and exile, which in our time has become more the norm than the literary exception. And so I attempted as a kind of sculptural uh, research to make one of these Russian onion domes at full scale. I set to work trying to work out how they make them. I made a, a wooden armature um, in my backyard in Melbourne and then gradually clad it with these hand carved tiles. And so it forms a motif just as we attach ourselves to a central idea in a book or a novel. It is a kind of a, a central form that I hope the viewer can relate to in this room. Thinking about the idea of the gulag, the idea of a forced 
camp that uses distance as a secondary form of punishment brought me to thinking about contemporary life in Australia and the camps that, that we are running uh, in the Pacific. And so I googled uh, Australia's gulags and found that it's a very common accusation that Australia is running gulags. Um, and I was thinking about how art, how design can be in a lateral way, can be in service to thinking about these struggles and thinking about changing them and thinking about also taking responsibility. So I've translated those texts which name Australia as a place that runs gulags, translated those back into Russian and made a series of prints with them and we'll be working at the MCA doing a public workshop which considers these ideas of design and politics. The third work in the exhibition is called The Outsider and it's based on Camus' novel L'Etranger or The Outsider which is a kind of, again, a, a seminal existential novel, which I think can be useful for thinking about post-colonialism, social responsibility, geographical politics as well. So I guess in making these kind of big models of a text, I'm thinking of them kind of like a philosophical toy that you can move around and see a text from different viewpoints. The outside is set in the city of Algiers, and so my sculpture is a kind of model of that city, in particular the Marine Quarter and the Casbah, where much of the action of that novel is set. In that book, there is the main protagonist, Merceau, uh, kills an Arab, and then he fails to feel sadness when his mother passes away and so he's seen as uh, someone who who sits outside of society and therefore is a stranger. So those aspects of the book are rendered as kind of sculptural form. The murder is shown as a kind of red patch on the sand because it happens on the beach. This time when I set it up I thought of some of the more interesting contemporary analyses of that book, which actually recasts the, um, the novel from the perspective of the Arab and the Arab's brother. Um, and so rather than showing the subjectivity of the, the main um, French Algerian character, I've changed it to show the kind of sculptural form of the death itself. I'm interested in different movements in literary theory and how our perception of a text can change and how we can use them in different ways to inform um, contemporary political struggle.